This project is sponsored by PCBWay. The high-quality precision PCBs you will see in this video were all manufactured by them. And did you know that they also offered CNC and high-resolution 3D printing services? They do. Check them out for your next project. Thanks, PCBWay. Suddenly, all the hard work is paid off. <laughs> Look at that. It's just amazing. Oh my god. While most people probably enjoy the result of a project of hard work after all the hard work and you see the finished project, actually I think I enjoy the design and the problem solving more than I enjoy the finished product. <laughs> so I'm going to share some of that with you guys right now. The idea is not new. The idea is uh, one of these uh, infinity dodecahedron. Do -de infinity dodecahedron. Typically what people do is they 3D print the dodecahedron in pieces on a 3D printer and then they use LED strips on the inside. The problem with that is there's a lot of cutting and soldering and assembling and the problem I said to myself is how can you make it easier to build? And this is what I came up with. Each of these edges are going to be PCBs and then when they meet, you could see how they meet over here is how the connection is going to be made. At each of the intersection, the vertex, I guess. So these are edges. And this is a vertex. It will be a meeting of three edges. And on the outside are always going to be negative. On the inside is always going to be positive. And then basically everywhere it will be exactly like that. So you don't have to worry about anything. By design, you could see that the blue output goes to a gray or is it green? Whatever that color is. The blue output goes to in. So the output of this LED strip here goes to the input of this LED strip here. And if it desired, you could also have it such that, you know, it goes the other way around and it goes to this one. Basically, this this blue here and that blue there are wired exactly the same. So you can supply the data going this way or this way because flipping this would not that would not really change that. Um, you can s use it either way. So it's bidirectional. It doesn't matter which orientation. And the one way, the LEDs will go in the sequence. The other way, the LED will go in the other sequence. That's, you know, has to be fixed in code. But anyway, the thing that I find really interesting that I spent <laughs> countless hours <laughs> trying to figure out is how do you wire this thing up with that clever thing? It's like, I thought that was very clever that there would be no wires anywhere because everything is wired through these PCBs. But if you could just follow one of these pentagons, you'll see the problem. So let's say just get, pick this front pentagon right here. So the data will go from here to here to here to here to here to here. Well, once you get here, then you have to kind of like jump over here. And so you go here and then you go like that. And then this one is already done. So you can't go back over here. So we're you know you have to go that direction or something then this one will be left out so it's like because it has to be a continuous uh chain for the addressable LED to work that is really becoming problematic so i spent a lot of time trying to figure out it's like is it even possible to wire this up without having you know jumper wires basically you know you, you end up on a corner and then you have to go jump it to this corner or something and then start over again and stuff like that and i think i figured out how to do it so uh, I'm going to test my theory. I've been printing this with just paper so I could actually tape them together with a blue tape and to make sure that my theories work. This one almost worked. I, I have to use two wires. You know, you make a circle and you could keep on going. You could keep on going, but eventually <laughs> there'll be some edges that are not powered. Well, they are powered, but they're not. The data aren't going in there because there's no path. Anyway, I've talked enough. So. You, you can watch me suffer now. <laughs> okay, let's see if I really did a good job here. This took about half an hour to do this. <laughs> uh, the things I do for fun. Okay, so this is the beginning of the whole thing. The beginning of the chain. It comes in, in here at A. You know, so there'll be LEDs here. And then here, the output of this is going to go to number two. 
and one's going to go to two so we're going to solder this particular connection here from two it's not going to go to here because we're going to go three over here the output here is also available here so i'm going to go take it from here so it'll go bing and come back go here so we don't solder that one we don't solder that one either uh, but we'll solder the, the power of course so that's three three is four and four also is over here and over here so just five over here six is clockwise seven is also right down again eight is clockwise and nine is going to again and then here's ten notice that we're back to one here but we're not going to connect anything to do to one and basically these are the key here being able to come back instead of going keep on going being able to come back is the key to being able to create this in one continuous loop so 12, 15, 14 is also back range 15 and basically it's like so it actually is makes sense i mean but that, how long it takes me to get to this point i suppose somebody who's a mathematician probably uh, could figure this out in like five minutes it's working i think i have not you know everything is just 19 to go here, 20. There's 30 edges, by the way. And that's the end. So yeah, this whole thing, this one continuous loop and not doing any jumper wires anywhere. I'm pretty happy with that. <laughs> no PCB is always exciting. <laughs> I have this V-grooved. So these are actually six of the PCBs on one board. And then you just break it up. They make a tiny groove on all these. Uh, but yeah, this is the first board I have done that has the edges actually uh, plated. Hopefully it's visible. Yeah, you can see how shiny it is there. So that is actually plated so that way when they're at an angle, they will actually have some place to connect. So let's put in a... You might be able to do this without a vise, I don't know. Just trying to be safe. Oh yeah, breaks, breaks right off. It's pretty clean. That's gonna keep on going. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. It just breaks right off. No sending required. Yeah, check it out. It's working pretty good. So it should all meet here, and it should not meet perfectly because this is flat, but at an angle. They, all the pieces should meet perfectly but since we are now on a flat surface they don't meet so that's pretty nice so i discovered something that i need to fix i figured out that i could simply disconnect certain traces and i was trying to figure out how the best to do it and a simple utility knife does it so the trace that i need to cut are back here they're a very very thin line i don't know if you could see that right here there is a cut trace right there and then also down here it's amazing how thin those are those are the data lines so uh, they don't carry much current when i designed this i knew that i'm going to need a jig to solder this because they don't lie flat they actually have to be uh, moved at an angle to make a dodecahedron so having to hold this like this trying to solder it at the right angle is just going to be impossible so i've designed a jig for that but I did not design a jig to solder this because I thought it's like, oh, how hard could it be to just like land up these four pads to these LEDs? But <laughs> it's harder than, than I thought. There's a lot of freedom here, you know, up and down, left and right. Thank you, thankfully, there's no Z axis, <laughs> just X and Y here. So I made a jig. So you put the PCB in there. And then, uh, this is a half. It has a... It has the notches for half of the length of the uh, LED. So when you put the cover in here, and then you put this in here, the LED is still visible. It has to be the right direction, of course. 
I guess I should show you that first. Notice the like on the LED is not like on the corners, but actually on the uh, two sides. There's one here, there's one here, one here, one here, but they're not on these sides here. So I have put a triangle in here to know which way it goes. So you put that in a triangle like that. And that holds it in a perfect place for us to actually solder it here and here. <laughs> so you do that 11 times, then you could take it out and then you could solder the other side. So we'll see how well that works. That's, <laughs> that's the plan at least. Well, so far so good. I have to tape this because it was too loose. Maybe I'll print another one too. It will snap better, but yeah, it holds it perfectly there. You could see that it it holds it pretty good. I mean, if, if it will fall out if I turn it upside down, but that's maybe another thing I could do just to adjust the, uh, the tolerance here so they hold the LED better. But I think it's good that it's not too tight because otherwise it will be really hard to put it in there. And right now it just falls right into place. So, and, but you could see how how well they lined up with the pads. So I don't have to worry about that anymore <laughs> because before it's like, I didn't know how like if I need to push it further down or you know how they lined up in here so now they should they should line up and ah! <laughs> okay maybe I should make that tighter <laughs> okay I'll print another one we'll see how well this one works yeah look at that it's very tight now Oh yeah, it's very snug now. Look at that. <laughs> ah, 3D printing is so amazing. In my haste, I forgot to put the flux in there. Hopefully it's okay. Yeah, check out how much flux make a difference. So. The one closest to us here is the one that I did first with the triangles, you know, the one that was, no, I forgot to put the flux. Compare that to the one on the other side where I have put flux. It is so much cleaner. We're gonna test it anyway. Okay, let's see how well I did. So I made this a little uh, tester. All of this is basically a sketch that goes back and forth, back and forth. So I make this staggered. So as you plug it in, that's the first one is a minus, and the middle one is theta, and then the other one is plus. So basically it doesn't get power until everything is connected. <laughs> I thought it was pretty cool. Okay, let's see how well this works. But yeah, that's basically making sure that every single one of them works. Nothing is loose because we don't want to fix it once it becomes a, uh, all enclosed in the plexiglass. So, all right. Okay, here's why you have to test your work. It's like that one stays red no matter what's happening. So I guess it, I don't think I could have done the wiring wrong because the color, it's it's lit up. Uh, I guess if the data line is not working, well, but it's going to the next one. So <laughs> it must have passed through. So uh, it's probably just a, a dud LED that I need to replace. Well, imagine if you don't test this and, and it's already in a cube and it's already closed up. Uh, no thank you. <laughs> Just seven more. It's getting there. Man, I wish I thought of this way earlier. But uh, it's much easier to do it this way. You just basically drop off the LEDs on them. You don't even have to count them. Just drop them off. You can see it uh, beginning to take shape already. There's still a couple more that needs more LEDs. So just keep on dropping them off. It's a lot faster this way. Oh, I think I got enough. 
it's all right about the stack right that's okay it's like her but you see it's so much easier to do it this way so once you get three of them we need to put them all together so i made this little jig 3d printed of course and it works really great so you can see that it basically holds them at a right angle and then it makes it easier to, to solder so just put them in there sometimes i have to put a clip on you know one of these binder clip but this time it's it seems to be holding pretty good it's coming along really well oh, here's something i haven't planned before as you get uh, further and further down the chain it's going to get harder and harder to hold this thing together i guess when we find out do them <laughs> but look at that i think it's amazing that pcb manufacturers can make this so accurately like that and also how 3d printing helps so much in holding this together because there is no way i'm going to hold that by hand and get the right angles <laughs> I don't know if I could put my camera in here while I'm soldering. So I almost forgot to put some more flux in here. That would have been disastrous. It makes it so much easier to solder with flux. I'm kind of lazy to change my, my tip to a, a bigger one. Might need a bigger one. There's a lot of material here. We'll see. So fine a tip. Can I turn it on? Nope. <laughs> I didn't turn it on yet. No wonder it's not hot. <laughs> oh, it works anyway. That's not bad. See how well flux works. Makes it so much easier to solder. Because it just goes where the flux was. And cutting those um, traces makes it easier to solder because you don't have to worry about it. Just solder every matching piece here. I have to worry about which one I need to solder, which one you don't, depending on what edge you're on. You just have to connect them all together. Hold on. I did put the solder on the other side, but there is basically a gap there. Yeah, surprisingly, it has enough heat to, considering I'm. Look how fine this tip is you know it's amazing that no matter how hard you try to think of everything something new always come up that i didn't think of before like i thought by having this path in here figured out i'm i'm home free and i could just keep on wiring it up but notice how you know like if i just follow this along this is by the way the 10 right here and then this is the one and that's a nine right here so i have the pentagon right here and a couple of them sticking out which is fairly stable but i don't know if i want to keep on doing that you know like holding this up in midair without having this piece in here but for that to happen i also have to have 13 here because this is 12 and this is 14 and and 13 is going to be up in the air it's like that's not very good i mean when i'm trying to solder this with this whole thing in here it's going to be pretty unwieldy and the chance of me like knocking this accidentally while i'm trying to solder some other pieces is pretty high so i decided that i'm going to keep on going with a vertex idea which is how i made these basically even though this is the next one i'm going to leave that alone right here i'm not going to leave that alone but i'm going to make this one next which is that will make a little vertex It'll look like this 11 25 and 24 and this will be very stable and then i'll make this one 12 13 14 and that'll be very stable and once i got those then i could take the this first one with the 11 
once I get that, I could put this one here and put that one there and solder that one. I think I will just probably put clips on here. Yeah, I won't solder this until I have the third one. Because I think if, if, I, if you start soldering with just two, I think there is a chance of it not lining up. But I always want to try to solder when it's there's already, already three, which is like this vertex over here. So, <laughs> yeah, like I said, it's like I thought there's not much to do after this just keep on going but I, I think that would be a mistake if I just solder this in sequence and it'll be like flailing all over the place being held by just one little corner here I think we always want to make sure that all three of the vertex are always in here soldered together so wish me luck <laughs> okay so we're gonna need 11 24 and 25 uh oh, where's 11? <laughs> what happened? What did I do with 11? What did I do? Did the cats eat them? Oh my gosh, there's a whole bag in here. <laughs> so these probably don't even have uh, capacitors yet because I, I uh, had to buy the capacitors at a later time. Okay, so I guess we might have to do some soldering. Yeah, there's the missing capacitor right here. Okay, capacitors first. These are <laughs> even tinier than the LEDs. So here's the LED, and here is one of the capacitors. Can you even see that? Yeah. That's how much smaller they are. Three, four. Yeah, I didn't have enough of these i need like 30 of them as you know and i only had like five so i had to buy some more but this is like 50 right here <laughs> it's like so tiny okay so i don't know if you need to see this it's pretty boring just capacitors i can't remember if i show you this before or not but basically i got sick and tired of making a test for one for two for three so i made this programmable so i can ch choose how many to test so i could just test one and then they will just test that first one and i could change it to two and i'll set, check the first two and i could also of course change it to three and actually it can go check all the way up, up to uh, all 30 of them and so now it's actually going to check all three of them and I can also change the speed. And then I could change the color. So that way I could check every LED for every color. And I could check either one or two or, well, whatever. And then eventually we could check that whole thing also, of course. Check that out. I only got five of those edges left. The other ones have been turned into vertices. So that's going to go joining this guy well i've got this far and i'm not sure that i've accomplished my goal of making this easier to assemble <laughs> it is quite unnerving it looks cool and all but it is not as easy as i thought to assemble this the jig help of course i have not have too much issues with things not lining up one of them was a little bit that gap was too big so i couldn't jump it but i think it would have been okay if i soldered from the inside out because when you're soldering from the inside out the solder flows into that giant gap whereas if you go this side you have to really jump that that gap and it doesn't work very well but if you go it from the other side it works quite well so yeah it's like i only got what how many minutes one two so that's six and then that's five so still 11 more <laughs> and it's taken quite some time to get this far so maybe this is not easier way to do it either just another way <laughs> well guys this is the last solder point right here and i'm pretty pleased with the way it turned out because basically that is hardly any variation i think the jig works really well you know when we put the jig in here i think it will hold it just perfectly in there without much effort but i am very pleased with the way it meets Perfectly. I was really worried like, you know, we're gonna put this whole thing and then the last few pieces are not gonna line up But I think it works perfectly So I can't quite see because the camera's in my way, but 
Hopefully that actually is perfect. <laughs> All, how many shutter points are these? I think there's only 20, but there's sure, it sure feel like a lot more. <laughs> Okay, this is all 330 LEDs lit up, but only at half of the intensity, and I think it's plenty of bright. So for 330 LEDs, I was using this 8 amp power supply that I got from makeshift, thanks guys, and it only takes 3 amps. So 330 3 amps at half brightness. I think that's plenty bright. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I was mistaken. That was only at a quarter. This is now half. I mean, I don't know if the video will do it justice. I mean, it is blindingly bright already at half the intensity of uh, 127, 127, 127 instead of 255, 255, 255. And we are only using 5 amps. Um, so. I think I'll stop right here because it is blindingly bright already. <laughs> yeah, it makes a good light box, huh? Yeah, this is my original idea that I was going to just use uh, gaffer tape. I thought it would look fine, but I think it doesn't look so good. So because it's flexible, depending on how the two pieces meet, you know, you could have some pieces like that. And then when they meet in here, it's like, no matter what you do, you, you end up with something that is like overlapping, that is not consistent. I think 3D printing is <laughs> amazing every time, I'll, almost every time I print something. I mean, look at this. That is just one layer standing up with no support. Very smooth. Just amazing. Yeah, there's some jitter over here. But that shouldn't be a problem later on because I'm going to make a pentagon out of this for that guy over there. Because uh, the... Uh, gaffer tape looks like crap so yeah yeah that's no contest this is so much better <laughs> yeah it's gonna be a pentagon and then i'm gonna make some spars in here or maybe some partial ones over here so that one will be full but this one may be partial you know without missing here and then the same one the same one two three so it will be a, a triple here and then the same three will go on that one and so on and so forth also you could see through there Black would pay hide it better. I'll make it a little thicker though, because that's pretty thin. Well, that's pretty sturdy. I'm gonna try to break it, see if it breaks. No, it's pretty sturdy. Oops, I just bent it. I didn't. It didn't break, but it bent. I'll think about it. I'm gonna make. I'm gonna print one before I go bed. doesn't quite all the way through. The, the wires get through, but the, the shielding doesn't, so just a little bit bigger probably. Uh, two would be too much. I guess I have a couple more chances here. I still have to make a couple more faces, so if this one is not big enough, I'll make it even bigger. But I want it to be really snug. And according to measurement, it should be 125, and it already made it 1.3, 1, 1. Uh, and it's still not big enough. I guess that's just the accuracy of my cheap laser. But we'll see if that goes if that's good enough. Control G for generate. Yes, generate. Action for creating the post file for the G code. Oh, for right, yes. Now we can go back to K40 Whisper. Reload the file. The hole should be bigger. And go run the code. I just missed cutting those holes. Hopefully those holes are bigger. I think they are. <laughs> oh. Come on. Oh yeah! So 
a little looser than I expected. Maybe I'll put a little dab of hot glue in the inside. Yeah, that's perfect. I think it'll be good because there is this distance here. I could put some uh, hot glue in there and it will resist the pulling and then the whole thing hopefully is stored enough so I could actually hang it from there too. I decided to do that or just lay it flat. Pretty good. Yeah, I can't really tell which side is which, but I learned everything I am showing you here from the internet. It's like you put, you put one, one tape on one side, and you put another tape on the other side. But don't connect them together. You know, basically you hold the two pieces with tape, and you peel it off using that tape. And one of them will be the transparent one, this one, and the other one is the one that we want to use. And of course, this is the surface that you want to put onto here. So now that I got that, I put it this way because I know it's going to put it that way. And then this one here, they both still have the plastic protective plastic, so I just peel off one of the sides. And this is the first time it's actually peeled off, so this side should be clean. I was cleaning them up with glass cleaner and stuff, but there's no need because this has never seen the light of day until just now. So then I put uh, some water. I put liberal amount of water because I think that makes it really glide really easy. So the line there is on the other side so it's okay so this side is we're going to go over there so don't touch anything <laughs> and so now we put the two pristine surfaces together and then i put more water for lubricant basically and then you you use a credit card to kind of like gently first you just get it in the right shape so you know where they are make sure that you have all the corners and then yeah keep it wet because that is the lubricant and then make it kind of flat you know don't do this make it flat and that makes a really good squeegee i have this squeegee that i bought specifically for this this credit card works better than the squeegee so basically i uh, lay it flat like that that gets all the air bubbles out um, I get it to all the surfaces. Sometimes I see it scrape. Um, I mean a uh, scratch. I don't know what it is because that, you know that should be perfectly flat. But yeah, you can see that it is doing a really good job by keeping it flat like that. So it really created a lot of pressure to for the air bubbles. Now, if you look at it, it's a gorgeous mirror. I'm gonna put it back down so I could cut it. You pay. You probably supposed to cut it later, but I've been cutting it now because I figure later on, if I turn it down like this, I'm gonna create dirt and stuff. But at least this side is actually um, cleanable now. Guess and this side is still protected. The other side is two pristine surfaces that's never seen a lot of day and just basically now exposed to air for like what three seconds while i put the two together so hopefully this turned out well because i i could still see some bubbles here and there but i think with all the lights it will become uh, unnoticeable it'll be a wash i'm not gonna like put on makeup with this mirrors so i think it'll be okay yeah, look at the light there, it's really beautiful. Oh, look at that. Yeah, I think that'll do. Okay, I only got two mirrors, one on the bottom and one on the top. Check it out. <laughs> oh. I don't know what I'm looking at here. I guess some of this reflection is maybe reflection on the camera too. But yeah, it's looking pretty awesome. And like I said, there's none on the sides. I presume with more on the sides. Let's see if I put my finger. Yeah, you can see my finger there. And with with more on this side, there will be even more reflections. Awesome. My goal when I started thinking of building this was something that is easy to assemble. 
that it's really difficult to make mistakes. I think I completely failed on that. <laughs> it still looks cool and I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out, but it is not easy to put together. <laughs> like right here, I had to feed, feed this through there because this is going to go over here, you know, covering all it up with the plexiglass over here and stuff. But it is unnerving to have to solder that with this plastic so close by <laughs> and then trying to heat shrink that without causing any issue to the existing solder and to this plastic. So yeah, there's a lot of room for improvement still for as far as the construction. As far as the dodecahedron itself, I think it's turning out great. <laughs> but when, like I said, one of my goal was to make this such that it's easy to assemble. And so far, there has been a lot of parts that are hard to assemble and this is one of them. <laughs> Well, here's another thing that I thought would be so easy, <laughs> but it is not because like there's nothing holding it over here. So and if I, if I put one in here, it just slides right off. If you put it right here, it will just flop right out. So I put them on the bottom here along my uh, little 3D printed edge and then I tape it here and I'm going to start putting the other ones. And then of course, there's all, all these cables that I have to deal with. Um, probably would have been easier if I didn't have the uh, touch sensors, but I have the touch sensors. These are the cables that goes on the uh, touch sensors. And they all have to go through down here, which is the bottom. So that's the top down there and that's the bottom. But yeah, it's like, and then I have to make sure that I don't touch any of the glass because what's, what's, once it's in there, I can't clean them anymore. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's just not as easy as I thought. I thought it would be just like, oh yeah, the uh, PCBs are done. Just have to put the glass on there. <laughs> okay, it took me a while, but I finally got it done. It's just basically I, I have to do it upside down. I start from down here, mount that, hold this in there and all around. And then I put these and undo those and hold it here and then hold it up there. It looks so simple, but it was really hard. <laughs> and hopefully they line up good enough. Um, such that it uh, looks good when it's a reflection because I think this surface here has to be parallel to the other side and if it is not parallel then maybe the reflection will be skewed so now I'm gonna have to take this out and put the side pieces like these side pieces here so I'm gonna put that one there put another one back there and keep on going Whew. okay that is cool that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm speechless. It's full of stars. Yeah, I still have these tapes and stuff in here, but it's gorgeous already. Yeah, you can't even see the tape this far. Okay, <laughs> moment of truth. I'm going to take out all this tape and hopefully the glue stays and everything stays up together and <laughs> doesn't fall apart. Um, yeah, I, it's a balance of uh, putting enough glue and putting too little glue because if I put too much glue, it's going to ooze out and be visible in the mirrors. But if I put too little, it's not going to hold it up. And it's like, I don't know. Never done this before. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try carefully to use this without scraping the mirror. Yeah, the acrylic I'm sure is very, very uh, delicate. So I can only do that when there's a gap because I cannot use it to pry it off when there's no gap. But yeah, there, when I was gluing this, I try to make them flat, but some areas. I just can't because I think the uh, the acrylic actually is bigger than the uh, PCBs. I think somewhere along the line there's, you know, I don't know, calculation and tolerance or whatever. They're not exactly the same, um, but I figure it's probably better that way or then it doesn't fit. <laughs> so, wow, I really uh, use a lot of tape here. 
and yeah one of the things I discovered is because I have these touch sensors I had to deal with all those wires um, for, for the touch sensor and had I not have that I think it would be easier um, probably should have put the whole thing together and maybe put another layer for these and hide the wires on another layer um, but I didn't think of that <laughs> so when I was building this it was really really stressful to uh, maneuver the wires and make sure that the wires are not like pinched bad badly so it, it breaks I think I'm gonna speed up the video now Okay, that was a lot of tape. A lot of tape. <laughs> so hopefully it still all work. I'm gonna turn it on. Oh, it still works. Yay! Look at that. This is amazing. Yeah, you gotta be here to see this in real time in real life. This is amazing. And this is just the all the, the white. All, all the white. I have a couple of other uh, patterns that are programmed in, so let's see. I think this one is a rainbow. Yeah. So that just um I try to make a like a gradual change from one end of the rainbow to the other end of the rainbow. And then I got a couple other ones. There are five touch sensors and Currently, I, I just have different effects on each of them. That's the white that you saw initially. That's a rainbow. And I think this is a random one. Yeah, basically I pick random colors. It's not that cool, I don't think. But, you know, this is basically a canvas. We could do whatever we want with all the LEDs and come up with different ones. And let's see, this one will fill it in little by little. You can see gradually fill in one of the color. The color is not quite real, right. LEDs are always hard to shoot with a camera. Maybe if I turn off lights. Oh, that might be a little better. Yeah. And like I said, you gotta be here to see this in 3D because like you're only seeing one side and every time you move it, <laughs> you get a different perspective altogether. Um, whoa, that's funky. So, and then the final one is my favorite. I call it uh, Full of Stars. Check this out. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Yeah, so basically, it looks like there's something inside it. But as you know, you saw me build it. There's nothing inside. They're all on the side. But those reflections make it look like it's, there's something inside the dodecahedron. It's just, I don't know. It's pretty cool. Well, guys, thank you for watching all the way to the end. I know this is a very long video. If you got any questions, um, let me know. Any suggestions for new ones? I plan on making it audio reactive. I think it'd be cool to have, you know, music and whatever to react to it. But uh, it's it's been a long journey, but I think it's been worth it. So thanks again for watching all the way to the end. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.